Hello and welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. I'm so sorry that I missed both of my uploads last week. It has been hectic, but I'm here now. I don't know what day this is, I'm finally uploading it, but I'm here now and I'm gonna do my mid-March catch-up as well as showing you some disgusting looking cocktail recipe that I found on the internet. Originally when I was looking for new cocktail recipes, I found some like Ponzi website that showed you how to make Downton Abbey champagne cocktails and I thought that's delicious. So I was planning to make something really snazzy, but I went to the co-op, they didn't have half the ingredients. So I ended up Googling cocktails that you can make with co-op ingredients and I found something called the Corner Store Pims, which quite honestly looks really gross. Such a random mix of ingredients, but I've got them all here, we're gonna give it a go. I'm also gonna give you a heads up that my reading this month has been absolutely shocking. I have not yet finished a single book. Usually by this stage I've read like eight, so it's been a real shock of a month. But I am going to tell you about all the books I'm currently reading, I've got a few on the go, the books that I'm going to try and squeeze in before the end of the month, and I'm also going to pull my get a hold of your shelf challenge and see what the category is for this month. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that you need for corner store pims is, obviously, some pims. It says in the recipe that you need two ounces, and I don't really know how much an ounce is, but I think it's roughly a tablespoon, so we're just going to guess based on that. Though it does say two ounces in a Collins glass, and they're the really thin ones. So this is going to take quite a lot more liquid, so maybe I should up the dose just a little bit. That'll do it. Next we need half an ounce of gin. Okay, so the spirits are in, I'm going to tell you what I'm currently reading. I'm still reading The Good Immigrant by Nikesh Shukla. I've been working on this one for a while now, I read an essay now and then before bed, and I'm just loving it, I'm really savouring it. Highlights so far, there was one essay called You Can't Say That, Stories Have To Be About White People by Darren Chetty. It's all about how even children of colour assume that stories have to be about white people, that's how underrepresented they are, and that was really moving. There was also a really funny one called Is Nish Kumar A Confused Muslim by Nish Kumar. He's a stand-up comedian, and his picture was used for a viral internet meme that didn't represent him at all because he's not even a Muslim. He's a really funny writer, so that one really stuck with me as well. I am also reading The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. This is the Girl Sex 101 pick, which is the book club I'm running with Emma Tobias. I'll link to her channel below. Really loving this one. We are reading it quite slowly, so it might drag out into two months at this point, but it's just gorgeous. It's so well written. I'm usually such a fast reader, and with this, I'm just savouring every word because it's so rich and gorgeous. You really can imagine yourself exactly there in the world that she's describing. You can smell the smells and feel the heat, and it's just really wonderful writing. And we haven't even got really started on the main gist of the story yet, and I don't even mind. It is the thing I'd heard people complain about who'd read this, is that it's very slow moving, and I actually don't mind at all. Because it's such a real and beautiful world, I don't mind how slow it's moving, I just want to stay there in the story with Cameron. So. Really big thumbs up to this one so far. And the third book I'm reading is something a little bit different for me because I'm listening to an audiobook. I never do that, it's really rare. But I have been lucky enough to get a free trial from this new service called BookBeat. They are basically like the Netflix of audiobooks. So instead of paying per audiobook, and they're always really expensive and that's why I never buy them, you just sign up for a subscription and then you can listen to whatever you want. And they've got a pretty good catalogue of books. I went through and there's a lot of books I've been wanting to read. Currently I'm listening to Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough and it is so creepy. And listening to it on audiobook makes it even creepier. Even just this morning I was listening to it and I was standing in my room like putting on my makeup and I started to get shivers down my spine because something really spooky was happening. It added so much more hearing it spoken to you. Big thumbs up to audiobooks so far. I feel like I'm very late to this game. I'm going to do some more reviews on BookBeat, the website, because it's a really interesting new model. It's a really inexpensive way of getting access to so many different stories. So. Watch this space, I will have more to say soon. Okay, now here comes the weird part of the drink. To add to the spirits, we're supposed to put in ginger ale, iced tea, and lime cucumber Gatorade. Now, I don't have any Gatorade, I don't know what that is, I couldn't find any replacement, so we're skipping the Gatorade. But I do have ginger ale, and I do have iced tea, but the only iced tea they had was peach iced tea. I don't know if that's quite what this recipe had in mind. It's probably gonna be disgusting. Like peach with ginger, pims, gin, this is a strange mix, but we're gonna give it a go. I don't even like peach tea. So it just says to fill up this glass with like a third of each ingredient, but because I don't have the Gatorade, I'm just gonna do half each and hope for the best. Oh, that smells so sweet. I'm gonna do less peach tea and more ginger ale. I'm also gonna whack in a couple apple slices just to make it look fancy. It looks pretty fun. Maybe this won't be so disgusting. 
that peach is really someone else. I don't hate it. I almost hate it, but I don't hate it. Okay, and now for the books I'm hoping to read this month, which considering I haven't read any yet is a little ambitious. I've got a book here coming out at the end of March called It Happens All the Time by Amy Hatvany. It says here that it examines the complexity of sexual dynamics between men and women and offers an incisive exploration of gender roles, expectations, and the ever-timely issue of consent. I do like that topic, so hopefully I will fit this one in. Then I have a super exciting book which I definitely want to read before it comes out on the 6th of April and that is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I don't have to tell you what this one's about, I'm sure you've seen the buzz, I've been so excited about this one. It is a Black Lives Matter YA book that is topping bestseller lists, I mean it is just groundbreaking, this is so exciting. And thank you so much to the lovely Grace Latter from Almost Amazing Grace, she writes this amazing blog that I will link to below, she hooked me up with this book, so thank you so much, go and check out her wonderful blog. And the next book that I'd really like to get round to hopefully this month. It comes out on the 11th of April, so maybe I could read it at the start of April. And that is Gone Without a Trace, which is a thriller. I've read the first few chapters because I wrote about it for Bustle. It's about a woman who comes home from work to find that her boyfriend has left, but he's taken everything, like every trace of him in their house they share. He's deleted his number from her phone, he's deleted messages. It's like he didn't exist. Is he just extreme ghosting her or is there something way more sinister going on? I don't know, I'll have to read to find out. You know, I'm taking back what I said about not hating that drink really quite disgusting. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to catch you guys up on is how I'm doing with my challenges, my book gel challenges, and the answer is not well, considering that I haven't even read anything, I'm not doing too well. But the one challenge that I really do want to complete, if I possibly can, because I did make it up for myself, is my get a hold of yourself challenge. So I'm now going to pick out what my category is for this month. Probably should have done that earlier, because now I only have 12 days to finish it. I'm really hoping I don't get read the longest book on your TBR, because that's not going to happen. But let's give this a go. I'm supposed to read. <laughs> You're fucking kidding me. Longest book. God damn it. I mean, it's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. I also realized I never specified for myself if I have to finish it this month in order to get the point. Like, do I get the point if I finish it next month? What do you think? I just don't know. I don't want to be a cheater, but maybe that's okay. Ugh, whatever. Let's just go and see what this book is. So I've got two bloody long books here. I don't know which one's longest, but they are House of Birds and House of Leaves. House of Birds, look how pretty this cover is, is set in Oxford, where I am now, so that might be quite fun. It's about someone finding a hidden diary and kind of parallel timelines. That one is 439 pages long. And then House of Leaves is a thriller that I've heard loads about. It's supposed to be one of the most confusing books ever, which is not gonna help with my speed, let me tell you. But it looks so exciting and intriguing. And that one is 705 pages long. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. In what remains of the month of March, I'm gonna read this beast of a book. Let's see. Thank you for watching my mid-March catch up and I hope you enjoy this disgusting drink more than I did. If you like peach iced tea, you might be onto a winner. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you've read any of those books and what you think. Mainly I would like to know, is it just whenever I complete a TBR challenge that I get the point or do I have to do it in that month? Let me know what you think because I like playing by rules but I also really want to get the points. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. See you next time.